Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee, and the uh, game still goes on. Uh, the GFS uh, has not given up at all. Uh, in fact, this run is fairly dynamic, which is, uh, I still have a little bit of skepticism in this. So we're going to see what the European does, of course. But let me just take you through what's happening. We're going to look at here, we're looking at the jet stream and the, the pattern at 18,000 feet. And this is tomorrow night as an upper air disturbance comes on through. And this is uh, opening up that northern jet with that stream of cold, uh, cold Canadian air that's going to be building into the northeast and down into the mid-Atlantic states, which is what you need is a, uh, one of the ingredients for a, a big snow. And here's our disturbance. Now, uh, the GFS has now come in line with the European and showing this pretty far to the south, lifts it up into Tennessee, and then it takes it into North Carolina and then begins to translate it northeastward. And this is where uh, we ask the question as to how real this is. Um, the extent of the upper air storm goes all the way up to Boston, into upstate New York, and then back into western Pennsylvania. And you can see the core of the upper low uh, sitting uh, right along the Virginia coast, which it sits there into Sunday morning, and then gradually kicks it out because the next system is getting ready to come into the plains. Uh, this is a, a pretty dynamic look. Uh, frankly, after the day runs, I thought that this would come in further south or further southeast, so I'm a little surprised that it did this, but it certainly suggests that we have to keep paying attention, and uh, we'll switch over to the surface map to show you how this translates uh, down in the bottom of the atmosphere where we reside. and basically what it does is there's your surface low that comes out of Texas moves up uh, into northern Alabama and you can see the big high that's building around uh, the banana high that builds around it and we're getting cold air on uh, north northeast winds or northerly winds coming down on Friday that's why I still keep thinking that Friday is going to be a day where it uh, has a tough time getting out of the 20s and then by uh, midnight or just a little after midnight, we have measurable snow up to about New York City, big band of heavy snow in the Washington, D.C., Baltimore area, and the low is right along uh, the outer banks near uh, in outer banks of North Carolina, the surface low, which it then takes to just east of Chesapeake Bay by Saturday afternoon, and we've got heavy snow going on across Long Island, New York City, back through New Jersey, uh, most of eastern and central Pennsylvania, and then back down into northern Virginia. And the rain snow line uh, looks like it's straddling the coast on this run. Uh, it has a pretty wrapped up low, so it's going to try and bring up warm air. And, and this is uh, this is going to be a big a question in, 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 in how, if this is real, then we're going to have to figure out where exactly is the boundary going to be between the cold, very cold air to the north and where we go into mixing or some rain. Uh, this is Saturday evening with the low still sitting off the Delaware coast, getting gales here, uh, heavy snow, the Long Island into New Jersey, even down even to southern New England. Now, it really affects that warm air from the east and brings in mixing issues across Rhode Island and even into the eastern part of Connecticut, but that's coming in from the east. You almost have this warm front that's kind of pivoting uh, from off the ocean. So that's a little unusual. So we're going to have to figure this out if this is right. And then um, Sunday around midnight, it actually shows it raining over parts of Long Island, but it's got heavy snow across northern New Jersey, southeastern New York, and probably into parts of coastal Connecticut. Again, we're not going to really know this until what this really looks like until we actually see the temperature profiles. And then by Sunday morning, there's uh, still some snow going on. It's colder, so it's all snow everywhere. And then uh, out to sea. Now, this is fine and dandy. Um, I want to see what the European does, that if it lifts a low, if it can manage to lift a low up toward the Delaware coast, um, then, you know, we might see the European shift things a little bit further north, or perhaps this model is stu still being overzealous. I don't know. I honestly don't know the answer to that. Uh, and then that goes out, and you can see the next weather system is already approaching on Tuesday with some you know, some showers, uh, the low goes by to our north, 
and just to give you an idea of the long range, I mean, it's it's chilly, but it's not overly cold, and you've got a couple of weather systems that are moving across. But you know what? At this point, we're so wrapped up into this first event, um, who cares? So let's uh, just take a look at what it does for snowfall. And I'll go on a little tighter view here so uh, you can get get a better picture of uh, our own area. Uh, in the northeast and there we have it now this is from this is Saturday morning where it has measurable snow already covering Long Island southeast New York and supposedly uh, we're talking you know 10 inch uh, 6 to 10 inches across New Jersey south of Route 78 into southeastern Pennsylvania uh, then it spreads it uh, northward now because of the mixing issues it's having a tough time over Suffolk County but in Nassau County uh, is in the heavy snow, and you can see it's generating some pretty good, uh, some pretty large amounts into northern New Jersey and part, it's, uh, and into southeastern uh, New York and the Hudson Valley. Big amounts back through the Washington D.C., Baltimore area into southeastern PA, and when it's all over with, um, you know, pretty impressive area on this model run of uh, one foot plus snows. Uh, it even takes uh, has half a foot of snow up over parts of northern Connecticut. And if you are a snow lover, I mean, you really do want to see this. You want to see this precip get pretty far to the north and not get cut off right near the coastline. Again, this is the maps projection off this model run. I'm not forecasting this. Um, I think I would say based on what I'm looking at, regardless of what our own forecast issues are, that for down in this area, for uh, Virginia, Washington, D.C., Baltimore area, and maybe into southeastern Pennsylvania, the confidence level is a little bit high. Same goes probably for the southern half of New Jersey, uh, given the kind of system it is. It's a little more dicey up we are because of all of the things that have to happen in terms of the meteorology to get it up here, because it's not the most classic setup that you'd like to see. But you know what? You dealt the cards you dealt with, and you go from there. So here's the bottom line. The GFS. Uh, says uh, this is still in the ball game, um, and we'll just wait for the um, European uh, to see what it does. Just want to show you, by the way, real quick on the uh, NAM model, which only goes out to Saturday morning. And you know, one of the things that kind of struck me about it tonight when I looked at it was the fact that this is by Saturday morning is the fact that you've got a surface low. Pretty far west, pretty far west in Chesapeake Bay. I was a little surprised to see that, um, and you, you see it's got snow uh, up uh, by Saturday morning into Central Long Island. It would be snowing in New York City and all of New Jersey and southeastern PA. I don't, I can't see what goes beyond 84 hours because the model doesn't go out very far. Uh, it doesn't go out further than that. But this is one of the shorter range models. It's not the most reliable. Sometimes it can be very good. Sometimes it can be not so good. Um, but one of the things that I pointed, I pointed out in some of my posts today that was nagging in my mind was the fact that we've had a, uh, several times in the last six or seven weeks with weather fronts that were forecast to just keep on moving with waves developing on it that were offshore. And then when we got close, it turned out that the front would get hung up and we either got clouds or even in a couple of instances rain. And then, of course, you had the Saturday event. I'm sorry, the Sunday event where a storm was shown to go out. And in reality, it backed far enough westward that we got a coating to an inch or so of snow out of that uh, Sunday afternoon and evening. So I want to bear that in mind in terms of, of a model bias that it might be having. Um, the European in that instance, by the way, was the last model to catch on to the fact that that surface low was going to be uh, further west. So let's see who, which, let's find out tonight with what the European does in terms of in trying to figure out which model is leading which model is it the gfs that's leading the european or is it up until now i mean through the trends the european has been leading the gfs into taking the system further south which it's now kind of matched up with now we got to see is is it going to be leading the european further north at the point that the storm comes up the east coast or is the european going to insist on a low much further southeast with a northern fringe of snow maybe to New York City and, and southernmost New England, and the heavier snow is confined back to, say, southern New Jersey, southeastern PA, and back through Maryland and Virginia. So um, stay tuned uh, for the uh, European uh, video analysis that will be coming up uh, in just a little bit.